Hi everyone, welcome back to the Matter of Britain page. Um, so I'm, I'm here uh, today to talk to you about some um, findings about DNA, which uh, which I've um, I'm, I give, have to give a shout out to Liam Gracie for for uh, making me aware of this. I'll give a link to his channel. Um, and basically, um, a couple of years ago, I, I took a DNA test with Ancestry, um, which gives you your auto autosomal DNA reading. Um, and, and compares your genome, both your mother and your father's side, with um, modern populations, and it goes back 250 years to give you a kind of um, overview of which modern populations you relate to. So, yeah, I think it goes back to 1750 or something like that. So it, it can give you an idea of where your ancestors were before the Industrial Revolution was in full swing. Um, and no surprises uh, to see that... Um, I'm half Welsh, <laughs> seeing as, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, dad, dad is fully Welsh, um, but but my mum's um, got a mixture of um, Scottish, English, uh, Ashkenazi, Jewish, and Irish. Um, there were some, uh, some some personal familial surprises in there, and I'll go into that another time. Um, but um, yes, my my genetics uh, probably mirror the the migration of the of the uh, of the british people um in, in you know scotland england and wales all being in there and ireland too um <clears throat> so there's a a third party website called myshoeancestry.com which i'll give a, another link to um and you can upload if you want your your raw dna file to this third party site and they compare your genome with burial sites worldwide and um, to see which ancient ancestors you relate to um so there's just thousands and thousands of samples on there of of archaeological digs and uh you know skeletal remains with dna uh, you know gettable dna in there um so they can get haplogroup readings from these burials and I found some very interesting things on there. Uh, on on this, um, there's there's like a, a an ancestry timeline setting which you can choose a, a date period and then you can marry up your DNA with that data, and it gives you um, essentially a timeline uh, of of ancestors which you can when when we're when we're talking about topics associated with Britain's in history like migrations from anatolia what, what we found has been very interesting for that so i'll um i'll just give you the the data and you can make your own mind up as to what to think of it um there we go <laughs> we've got immediately a very interesting presence in um anatolia uh, we've got old assyrian anatolia here um two samples that I, our dna matches with um as well as a Hittite um, sample as well. Um, and then there's a Proto-Illyrian Bronze Age um, sample. Um, but we've also got all of this stuff around here uh, in the steps. But this was this was one which, it was cool to see, basically, a Semite and a Canaanite connection at 1550 BC. And the, the Semites... And the Canaanites apparently were there's a there's a huge intermixture there between the Semites and the Canaanites, and they this website can't give basically a um, purely Semitic <clears throat> or purely Canaanite um, sort of label because there was such an intermixture between the two in in the Levant. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. There's um, but there's also interesting that there's an Ostrogoth um, link here. What date is it? 1546. 50, oh, to the top of the page. You got it now. Yeah. Well, as I mentioned, I've got a book of maps, which uh, I've got two copies of. Yeah. I'll, I'll get, get one to you, okay? Um, it's 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 a lovely book for setting out maps of um, Europe at different times. So I think it, it goes from about 3000 BC up to about um, 800 AD, I think. It's been a while since I've looked at it. Yeah. Maps, and it pinpoints where peoples are positioned and, and placed. 
Uh, and across time, you can see perhaps where those peoples or certain identified groups have been positioned or move or shrink or expand. And you get a, a sense of um, the ebb and flow and the movement across time. Yeah, so that, would be, that would be good to for me to look at the, that now with this information. So yeah. when it comes to um, looking at um, what to make of the Ostrogoths, that that will help me to come to a better understanding of it. Because at the moment, I wouldn't know what to say about it. No, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so. But obviously, they're where they're positioned at that time. That be that be um, it'd be good to look at in relationship to the other placements at the same time. That's occurring on the on this page. Yeah, absolutely. And that's an, that's another interesting thing about this about this reading is because we've got um, we start to see like here there's a, um, a Bronze Age burial here in Scotland that we're related to simultaneously to um, Semites and Canaanites in the Levant and yeah. also people in the Basque Country as well. Um, and also we've got the Steps again. In 1520. And moving on, um, we've got samples from these these people, the Heniti people. I'm not sure who they are. I tried to look into who they are. I can't find anything online. Um, but that's just a yeah. I don't know where to where to start with those people. But we've got um, Achaeans and Goths as well. Um, yeah. Again, we've got simultaneous links to Dorset uh, and Wiltshire. And Namesbury. Um, Fascinating. As, yeah, absolutely. And um, proto Illyrians <laughs> as well. And then moving on a little bit, we've got in, back to the Greek world, very much in the Greek world of this in this period. Uh, to, and the Levant with the Corinthians and the ancient Greeks and the Amorites, who are another Greek people. Um, so very just just scanning across this, you could you what lifts out then very quickly is the the proximity to uh peoples and the places that are tied in with the the idea of the of the british migration to to britain from anatolia yeah absolutely and, and the the presence of that um is there is there to be seen yes absolutely um there's a big emphasis on it's a you know a topic we speak a lot about in the Britain's in history world where that we've got this emphasis on making the smaller nations in in Britain um, Celtic and specifically coming out of Hallstatt or fashioning the national identity of Wales, Scotland, and Ireland very much with a, a what is actually a material culture coming out of Hallstatt it seems. Um, and the the people's the the sorts of artwork we see coming out of um, <clears throat> the the Laten around the area of the of the Laten, which you know you, you you can't doubt that 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 happened. But that does that mean that um, genetically we're from the the Halstead and the Laten area, you know, alone? Yeah, that, that's what I was given as an explanation on the DNA that I had about ten years ago. Yeah, that there was a link to me. Uh, as a pe people coming into Europe about 700 BC, and it cited uh, a link to Hallstatt, but it also cited a link to uh, it, um, Northern Italy too, the, the Etruscans. Yeah. Really? So okay. I, think, I think things have moved on since. Yeah, yeah. In, in the sense of um, identification. But that, that view, there's a view that obviously the Celts came into Europe from somewhere unstated. I mean, that's what I was taught at school. I was taught that the, um, yeah. the Celts came in about 700 BC. And I remember putting my my hand up in class. I was in a young boy in an English school at this point. <clears throat> and being Welsh, I thought, well, I, I'm being identified as Celtic. When I yeah. put that question to my uncles, they would say, don't know about that. We're Cymru, you know, so... Mm. Um, <laughs> that's they, interesting they said it, it yeah. they said it as they as they felt it no I yeah. don't know about that <laughs> yeah so I, put, I put my hand up in class and i said please sir um where did the if the celts came in to europe from yeah. the east where did they come from 
but he couldn't answer that. He had no, he had no answer for that. So it remained, it remained an un unanswered question. Yes, uh, and for a long time, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. But that, but that was the narrative being given out at that point that we were essentially European and that we'd stemmed from that particular culture. And my, my understanding is just loosely being interested in, in history because it wasn't my subject. I, I I looked at that and I thought, well, that's what's been made of it. But there seems to be a different view when it came to the, you know, the vernacular knowledge, the mm. homeschool knowledge at home when it came to being recognised underneath that name. Absolutely. And, and, and those who've... Uh been been watching Britain's in history and um, will know that there's been a uh, uh, an effort to create to weave those kinds of myths into the uh, constitutional mm. identity um <clears throat> there's a the the idea of of anglo-saxon supremacy if you will relies on the fact that the other smaller nations are celtic basically um bar barbarian you know it's celtic barbarism thing so there's this strong push to emphasize that part of our ancestry. Mm. Um, and obviously the 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 older narratives which have actually been held by those nations um have for, for a long time have been sort of discarded, yeah, you know, in order to um remove the possibility that these that the peoples who populated the country <clears throat> um came from civilized societies or advanced civilizations you know yeah so what we have what we have here style. we have we have in this information across here we have the um the shadow of that british narrative alive and present yeah we exactly. have a, we have a middle eastern um, footprint we have an anatolian footprint and looking at that there's it's there in in northern Italy, yeah. So we begin to see the unfolding of that old narrative of being um, ten tribe Israelite, stroke Trojan, yeah, uh, uh, um, as being present in 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 this information, which is uh, great. Yeah. To see. Absolutely, yeah. Uh... There are many more other complex stories there too. Yes, to unfold. Yeah. Uh, but that one is present. You'd think, well, that's that's great. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's a big reveal, really, this DNA, because the the narrative being, you know, that Geoffrey of Monmouth, you know, and Nennius, they, they invented the, the Trojan thing just mm -hmm. out of thin air, can just be thrown away now because of these genetic findings. Yeah. You, I, it, it, I think in time it will be supported by other um information too yeah so for example just using the the welsh language on 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 welsh writing the, the stones for example or even place names are beginning to uh, unravel narratives which uh, back up uh, an idea of a of a a, a history that was um held by um you know by the people by the people but, yeah exactly the, the the history held by the people exactly, and I've yeah. I've spoken about this before. This narrative wasn't just the the product of elite ideas trickling down from the top down, you know, supported by the church, you know, with Geoffrey of Monmouth and things who was asked to write the book. Um, these these narratives were so strong within within the Welsh that Edward the First conspired with the church to try and get the Welsh to forget those stories. And you don't. I don't think you have. Isn't that. the phrase he wanted? He wanted the direction was he wanted the Welsh to be weaned off their Trojan fantasies. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. Fun. That's it. That's it. Weaned off their Trojan fantasies. And the thing is, is that I don't think you're going to get that much of a, a, a will to retain those narratives unless there's some, some truth to it or some resonance somewhere. You know, um, not for you know merely a. Um, I mean the 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 mythological legitimation you can say is is you know, a, a, a good enough thing. But to be honest, I don't think it would be that deeply rooted in the people's psyche unless there was some genetic reality to it. <clears throat> yeah. So. I, I think a common story long kept. Yeah. 
and remembered in names. Hmm. So essentially, the the attack really was to de destroy the legitimate the legitimate British claim for sovereignty. For sovereignty, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And, and the, that was at the foot of it. Yeah, there's a timeline of kind of establishment attack on this narrative, um, which is all to do with kind of a, a royal dynastic tussle between certain mm. groups of people, with Henry Henry the Seventh commissioning Poydor Virgil the papal agent to rewrite British history in a way which mythologized it and confined it to that realm of myth and fairy tale for him. Mist, and his the, mist family. And the, the mist and the fog of the hills. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, there's a bit of magic there because the thing is, is that if those narratives are deep in the psyche of the people and he's getting someone to discredit them on one hand and then allow them exclusively on claim it for yourself, for your royal character, it's like that. That's some real voodoo magic there, which is like, yeah, I, I get to claim this for myself in this way, but none of you guys get to do the same. Because the thing is, if it's in the you know in that time there was humanism and there was a real uh, kind of push to make everything kind of scientifically backable, hoping to get a clearer picture of the present, as it were. Yeah, and to. Um, to come to a um, an understanding of the world so it was a re it was yeah. a rethink wasn't it a total rethink at that point yeah Makes absolutely yeah. and and if if you've got someone going around burning british manuscripts and writing to discredit everything then it, it does that that is a, a a good move to make sure that no one's challenging your on on a legal basis no one's challenging your right to the throne as a as a lesser welsh royal basically yeah that's what he. That's what. That's what happened there. But that just shows how powerful you, this narrative has been. Which, if you look at it, I think somebody once said that if you had a um, hundred thousand in Cardiff Arms Park, not sure what the capacity is, but yeah, twenty five percent of them could probably give a shout. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. I think that's not, not yeah, that's such a great saying. Yeah, not just a few people, but many, yeah. many claim um, contact with. Um, you know, kings of old, uh, yeah, uh, warriors of old, warlords of old, yeah. But everybody's. It used to be that I think Welsh families used to remember their significant um, family member. Yeah. So certainly, when I was I was young, I asked my auntie, you know, uh, who were we? So she gave me a name. Yeah, and I didn't know what the hell that meant at that point. But uh, I certainly remembered it, and obviously, forty years later, I did something about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think that was the case. It used to be the case that people would would um, would uh, record the they would have this if they didn't record uh, many generations of names. And I think it used to be a thing of pride to do about thirty generations. That yeah. you would read off. You would reel it off. But uh, you know, in shorthand, you'd go to the significant one of the past, and that was a, yes. a that was a, a common uh, idea, I believe, in the past. Yeah, um, and, and and that that comes back to um, this is what John Sadler wrote about in his pamphlet that the Welsh did this um, okay. and was a a one of the cultural relics left over from the Trojans, um, right. the, called the gravel kind, because when when a family member dies, you, the Welsh used to gather and basically lay claim to certain parts of land and you had to show your ancestry to do that yeah. they would share it basically the plots got smaller and smaller yeah it never went yeah to, it never essentially went to my understanding is it never went to one you know person no yeah you could, as as the inheritor it was it was essentially cut up and shared yeah Absolutely. Instead of the uh, progenitor, uh, which the oldest son gets the um, the, the 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 land, which is gets get the gravy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And that that's um, which very much like <clears throat> the feudal period. And and that that again that that kind of society that, that would have been a threat that, to the to the to the kind of orthodoxy. Yeah, well. you've got a shift in systems there, haven't you? Yeah, definitely. It's curious now then. Is, uh, well, it just popped into my head is in the sense is that there's probably a lot of people now constructing their family trees. Yeah. 
and kind of getting back to an old sense of the map of the, um, well, let's say getting back a, the story of their family to some extent. Yeah. I.e., you know, uh, who they are, where they are, and uh, who, who they've come from. So that seems to be um, a desire now, strangely, that might have been wiped out because I think much of this was, I think records in Wales were difficult. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think the um, the patronymic system um, has made it quite difficult for a lot of for a lot of people, isn't it? But the mm. as you say that that adjacent to that was this deeper emphasis on who your big ancestor was, mm. who's um, who's who's the guy you descend from, yeah. which is why, despite the patronymic system, you do get that. Um, a bit extra ability there with the Welsh um, genealogy yeah. stuff. I remember watching. Um... No, I do. I do remember being in, when I was when I was young, being in a pub in North Wales, and uh, there was a tussle going on. There was an, not quite an argument, but certainly, let's say, uh, an exchange of views. Right, and, and certainly it came down to um, uh, one party dissing the other party's belonging to a certain family. You know, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> So it's like um, um, yeah, you, you lot are the same after five hundred years. You know? Right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so having a good reputation, I suppose. Woo! Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely yeah. plays into that. <clears throat> Excellent. So I, I can imagine in that sense, it would be um, if you've got any dodgy characters in your family, the Sackville uh, Bagginses, or, or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You might, you might well have the odd um, champion or even traitor. Yeah, uh, yeah, you've got, got, again, yeah. God knows what. Yeah, 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 gotcha. <laughs> right, okay. <clears throat> so, going back to this, the the um, I've I've got a, another link with um, showing here immediately the Nairi people, who are essentially um, yeah. Hittite Armenians. The, the, they've also got again, which the names that show up: um, Illyrians and yeah. Mycenaeans. Uh, this one's in Delphi. <clears throat> yeah. So um, key key places when you're thinking of peoples, you know, in in the classic um, literature. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we've got a, 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 you know another link: Yamhad Kingdom. <clears throat> In southeast Anatolia, um, never heard of it. No, neither have I. There, there's so many names here which I've had to go back and really okay. just dig around. Who are these people? I've never heard of these people. Um, but they, but it's funnily enough, they all link up with this Levantine or Anatolian, yeah, you know, lot of people. It's charged with movement and people and places, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So I understand in that in that sense that there are, it's good to get your head around about who's who and what's what and what yeah. what what the kingdoms were. So I understand in that sense that the um, the Hittites and the Assyrians were not happy bedfellows and that they had tussles together, and um, one was very conscious of the other. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Is this going to lead us to all this all this new data that's coming out? Um, but what we've got what we've got is permission here to include the. The, the the British narrative of yeah the Middle East it's absolutely underscored there. We've got we've got a big yes we've got a big yeah. laugh we've got an, a very happy situation where we can say yes. we are now included. Yeah, we can we can our, now, our yeah, genome is there. We've got we can from from the several choices and overlaps in here we can we can track through in that sense that play, being in the Middle East. Um, being in the areas which the um, the the narratives for uh, the ten tribe and also for the Trojans are, are included, we yeah, do. absolutely. And the jump you? the jump to Italy and the jump to Britain are are um, are present. So, yeah, we'll get to that. We'll get to that in the moment. Yeah, the um, yeah, there's some some good stuff coming up. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. Well, it's interesting. I remember um, about Mary took me to Cyprus about um, twelve years ago. Yeah, 
it was the first visit. And she, I remember she took me to Famagusta. And this is before really I'd started getting my hat on with uh, looking at any connection. It, it was a kind of co a coincidal moment. I remember after about three days, she said I was walking around the island as if I owned it. Mm. And my legs were firmly planted in the ground. And um, well, the odd thing was people coming up to me and asking where places were. <laughs> I'm scratching my head. And thinking, yeah. What's yeah. going on with it? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But I remember looking out across... Um, the water at Van Augusta, and really we're looking out towards um, where, you know, the Lebanon is and uh, where Israel would be. And I had a distinctly strong pull. I really felt a strong charge. And uh, I remember saying that I get the funniest feeling that I'm looking at where I've come from. Bloody you know? hell, yeah. And um, it was it was a very real sense of remembering. Yeah. I can't put my finger on it more than that, but I really, it did really underscore the sense of that my my feet were allowed were allowed there. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I've, I've, yeah. I've felt it ever since, and, and obviously I need to mm -hmm. do more more visits, and uh, we do have planned, depending on whether the world r remains a sensible place. Mm -hmm. God knows, uh, but um, it would be great to do some journeying in the in the in the uh, Middle East. Yeah, I have always inherently felt a pull to the Levant in my life. Mm. Um, you know, I mean, a lot of kids who end up being in, in, interested in history love ancient Egypt, but I was one of those kids, mm. you know, and you, you, you sort of wonder how much of that is like a, a genetic resonance. Yeah, I would, I would say so now. Yeah. So... Yeah, so, I can't. I can't wait for, to to go over over there. Yeah, as you say, if if everything is sensible, and yeah. uh, have a look. Yeah, I think so. I mean, the, the, I remember telling the story. I mean, I I just painted things out for years, you know, in that sense of what my my business is, and um, I would draw from from dreams or memories. Yeah, I would also have remembrances that mm. I would write up that just would bubble up literally in the middle of a say. A, the studio. Well, wow. I, I remember when I was about fifty. I remember thinking, "Let me put these things together." And basically, they they were mainly in the form of the paintings and sketches that I'd done. And I I, I got stuff out. And I laid them out across the, the ground, and I, I looked at um, where would I place this? Where is this memory, or where where does that particular image come from? And I and I laid a track down, literally. And I got the migration path. Wow! Well, yeah, in the images, and that's when I began to think I'm I'm remembering something here. There's something in me which is beginning to tell me about um, uh, a past connection. Mm -hmm. That's that's one of the things that made me look out and to to go and seek out writers who are writing about the the early history of the Britons. Right. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. that was the motive. And I mentioned this to Ross Broadstock when, when I first spoke to him. I said, this is what kicked me off, Ross, is basically uh, paintings that I'd made across a 30-year 30, 30 period which I couldn't account for. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> this is it. It's been... I'm, I'm all for it. I'm all for it in that sense that we have, uh, we have uh, or we have access to or we retain memory in, in some way. Push from a lot of different individuals collectively, if you mm. will, to to follow an intuition about our past and our heritage and understand the through line of our ancestors, which for us has very much been intuitive, hasn't it? Mm. It's been intuitive and then it's become uh, confirmed, if you will, by historical data and now genetic data. Yeah. Uh, the genetic data for me is helping to place the historical data in a bit of a, more of a bit of context and we can really treat those narratives, I feel, a little bit more. They deserve to be treated a little bit more kindly now. Yeah. I think because of this. Well, let's, let's say brought over from the from the um, from the area of myth in, into history. So history, yeah. Yeah. certainly with the work that we're doing with uh, some of the, um, the, um, the the Welsh writing. Yeah, absolutely. In Stones, for example, or place names. We're beginning to get. Yeah. We're beginning to pull out the fact that they are. What's what was thought to have been Latin, for example, 
yeah. or even anything else, anything else but Welsh. But we're now beginning to, to get a sense that these things can render a message, a comprehensible message in 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 Welsh. So excellent. That's um that's also helping to pull over the um uh, certain characters from the era of myth into into history. Absolutely. So that, that, that's beginning. I think that's. I think that's that's now turning, it's turning in that direction now. Yeah, brilliant. <clears throat> and hopefully, um, in in years to come, there'll be more people who are, um, a, interested and, um, committed to making something of it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think this is all stuff to come, isn't it? Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so, one thing I want to mention before I move on, um. It's just some some not not someone I've looked into in a great amount of detail, but I just came across a video. I'll, I'll give a link to it. And so I'm interviewing uh, someone called uh, Mary Bakova, um, who is a professor of classics at Willamette University in America, who is a Hittite specialist. Okay. Um, and is talking about a kind of identical reiteration of the Trojan War in a Hittite um, tradition. That's fab that there's um there's an echo of it at least. There's an echo of it in the around about areas which could help with this transmission of the story through the mm -hmm. migrations, and which is why we've got it in Britain and why it's in Anatolia as well. Paul on Marshall Ancestry, you can select the the periods, you know, the intervals you can um throughout the timeline so you can get little snippets of um of data you can really it's like zooming in basically to see what's there um and yeah move, moving ahead um it's very much still in the same same area of uh yeah we've got philistines uh philistines uh nari people again and, and these yoles people i don't know who they are can't find out who they are either um just having a quick look online um <clears throat> we've got armenians again um, but we we begin to get Chimerians here, mm -hmm. as you can see. Yeah, notice that. Um, <clears throat> which you've got some ideas about the Chimerians, haven't you, Dad? Yeah, I mean it's 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 a term of um, it's, it's it's well known, it's well used, and plenty of people have tried to make something of it. Yeah, uh, one of the biggest issues is is um, does it relate to Cymru? Yeah, the Kimroy. They, yeah. They're also called the Kimroy, aren't they? Yeah. <clears throat> so it's 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 uh, it's it's clear. For example, if you look at the genealogies, if you take the uh, the Trojan families, take take the princes, uh, you follow down this. Uh, you soon you soon find names which are. Um, uh, identified as kings of the Chimerians, for example, and these are people uh, who are moving in from, let's say, Anatolia into um, into Eastern Europe and travelling westward. So you've got that sense of the genealogies certainly tie a link to Troy to the Chimerians. It's there. Well, I don't know why the I don't know why that uh, there might be a problem with that. Yeah. <clears throat> One of the other issues is whether the Israelites are linked to the uh, Chimerians. Certainly, mm. come you know the Cymru is close enough in, in its sound. Yeah, absolutely. And it seems to be that the uh, again the I think Wilson and Blackett mentioned that the the northern tribes were s separate from the the Abrahamic brothers. So if you've got yeah. if you've got if you've got Israel is essentially stemming from the tribe of Jacob. Then you've got all the other families that are Abrahamics. They must reside somewhere. And I put the point to Ross many years ago. Well, maybe those Abrahamics are are resident across the Middle East. You know, if not in you know Anatolia. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you've got you've got a link there between Abrahamic peoples. You might. You could title them in that sort of way. That might be a way of identifying them and grouping them. Yes, um, yeah. and that when Jacob went south, as it were, and travelled, 
And you take the narrative of, of that and they, they go into Egypt. They come out of Egypt. They resettle in Canaan. Uh, they're known as they're known as Israel. Well, that's one of the yeah, terms. This is them. it. Yeah, one of the terms. But my understanding that that in itself means something about those who you know those who are followers of um, you know the one faith. But yeah, the rest, who, who those who wrestle with God is how it translates. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So, so at some point, the people who are identified as being in the uh, northern kingdoms, the ten kingdoms, were taken into captivity, and and somehow uh, they were. Given the the appellation of uh, the people of um, Cymru, Beth Cymru, Beth Cymru, yeah, uh, that, uh, that was uh, I think Wilson and Blackie put it as that's that's in some kind of allusion to King Omri, who was the king. King Omri, yeah. There's all sorts of arguments about uh, who he was and whether or not he was an Isra Israelite. Don't know, really? but right. Okay. The, the, the sense of the idea is is that the the, the people are taken into captivity. They're, yeah. they're given a new name, and they remember that name. Now, why were they given a name of Cymru? Well, maybe, maybe you know, I put the argument that um, <clears throat> it's possible that maybe the Assyrians, looking at the ten tribes, were thinking, "Oh, here's more of that bunch from troublesome bunch from up above, the Cimmerians." Yeah. Therefore, yeah. somehow, let's, uh, the Cimmerians, the Cymru. So, I think, it, yes, I yeah. felt. <clears throat> In, in my sense, it might be an explanation. Whether it's, it could be, you, you certainly... it, I don't know, but that's what comes to mind. And in that sense, they've re they've retained um, retained that name. And in that sense, there's some sort of commonality, perhaps between the Cymri and the Cimmerians. They may be, yeah. not quite be the same people, but they might be kin, in the sense of yeah. Abrahamic, you know, under um, pinning. In so, the same way that you get um, this term, this modern term Celt, which is there to describe people in Gaul and people in yeah, who might have shared some material culture, they're called they're called the same thing by a external per, uh, part party. Yeah, don't you? You get you see that, don't you? See that thing where people are lumped into a group uh, based on a shared criteria. Mm. Which could be material culture or race or mixture or neither and just something else, to be honest. Yeah. So it, there's all sorts of variables. It's, isn't it's there? very problematic when you start trying to put something in a, a box and identify it. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Problematic. Yeah, definitely problematic. Right. Okay. And speaking so, of Cumerians. Here we are. Um, we've got uh, a link with the Cumerians here. Cumerian uh, down at 900 BC. Yeah. I've seen that statue. Oh, right, have you? Got a photograph of it. And um, I was with Mary and we were in Athens and uh, that's in the museum there. It's a fantastic piece. And if I could rest, if I could have wrestled that under my arm and <laughs> taken it home with me and put it in the case, I would have done so. Uh, a few... under family, um, uh, yeah, ownership, ownership, yeah, that's right. Oh, it's me dad, <laughs> but anyway, I kind of <laughs> took a, I took some great photographs. There were some fantastic pieces. The skill is tremendous, yeah, yeah. Um, it might be a later, obviously, a later depiction, it might be a later romanticized depiction because for uh. You know, it might be given as a Cumerian king of that period. Yeah. God knows when it was made. Yeah, really, really terrific. Yeah, yeah. The, the pieces there were fabulous. They really were. Excellent. Um, but we've got this simultaneous link, haven't we, again, with Canaanites, Semites? Not, yeah, I'm not joking. One of the observations I made to... Um, to Mary was when we looked at it, it says, well, you know, you could you could form a portrait of Christ from this head. Oh, the Cameron statue, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He could. There's a commonality there. You know, because I've seen images which are not too far from that when you get yeah. sort of presentations for an idea of the of the Christ figure in paintings across, you know, time. You know, that could fit in one of the formulas. Uh Bronze Age Kent. Yeah. 
Yeah, Wiltshire. Um, yeah, Kent, Kent and Scotland yeah. as well. Kent, Scotland as well. Yeah, Kent quite pops up quite a lot actually. Very much, yeah. Very much. <laughs> um, but we yeah we've got also which got is uh, which is interesting because that's the kind of tiptoe the first tiptoe in if you imagine the land movement of people coming across. Good point. Good point. All right. Yeah. And then you know that crossing at Dover is the uh, the obviously the obvious one to make. I can see the land there. Let's go across at this point. Mm, definitely possible. If if we're thinking of a, a land movement, and uh, we've got to we've got to visualize that um, that you know might have travelled um, in many ways, you know, by land or by sea, and even if you're thinking of Scotland, it's still on that. Um, I think it's on the eastern side. Though I, re I remember the references rather rather. Yeah. Than the yeah, there's a there's a few links to Orkney there as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, and yeah, Eastern Scotland. So important things to know. Uh, cool. And we've yeah, we've also got this Illyrian, again, um, uh, kind of Grecian. The Grecian world emerges again. Mm. Um, I think uh, it's been mentioned that the Illyrians are responsible for the alphabet. Is that right? Or, or yeah, developing the alphabet. Okay. So that's in that's interesting in itself. Well, it is when you think about um, the that phrase about uh, the, the British giving the Greeks their letters. Yeah. Whatever that means. Whatever that means. Yeah. Whenever that happened or occurred, but certainly. Yeah. I've... Strabo. Strabo said that. Thank you. And. Um, Aminus Marcellinus as well. That's that's it. That's yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah, we move forward a little bit, and it's very much the same sort of thing here. We've got um, Chimerians, Chimerians, Thracians, Illyrians. Yeah, you've got yeah. maybe that well, you are hungry down there, so you've got that kind of Danube uh, doorway in as well. Yeah, doorway in. How how the supposed Celts came in at right? How did they travel in? Where did they come from? Yeah. Please, sir, yeah. <laughs> if you know what I mean, you had yeah. that. You've got you've got the clues there. You've got you certainly for the overland uh, uh, migration that um, we can see to have happened. And certainly, we do get um, we do get the we do get the Colburn like alphabet text, which are a occurring uh, in Anatolia and uh, in, yeah. in the Danube Basin. We've got collections there which are attributed to Chimerians uh, that are in the museums there. So there is some type of um, record of the of the alphabet moving mm. on, on the track. So we've got the Danube as the highway, the superhighway going in. Yeah, yeah, well, and, and even on the move, you've got to say that um, you know, the production of some of the artifacts are showing that the the skills of travelling. Yeah, absolutely. They're not dormant, so they're not lost. But yeah. yeah. Now, yeah, this is it. This 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 page, okay, is interesting for a number of reasons. Because we get for the first time in in in, in our timeline uh, the the Sicani people, yeah, uh, the Sicani people are basically Phoenicians, okay, Phoenicians who are colonising um, parts of Italy and Sicily, yeah, right from that um, eastern eastern coast. So they they set up their colonies there. Okay, um, and we've got quite a lot of samples here which link in with the um, Sicani people in okay. Sicily. Yeah, uh, so that's cool. Uh, but we've also got these Etruscans here. Yeah. So in in our timeline, then we've gone. You you can see a through line amongst all of the other examples there. You that's can right. see a through line from the Levant, um, from Anatolia, from Israel, um, and Armenia, and you've got this. You, you you're now seeing Italian, you know, people in the Italian peninsula. Yeah, which is in the following of the uh, the the British narrative. Don't, don't we have don't we have a 
a sense, I think I might have heard it from Wilson and Blackett of the the Brutus hiring the fleet from the Phoenicians to carry the um, remnant. I've heard this, yeah, I've heard this. I didn't, I haven't looked into that myself, but I've, yeah. I, that rings a bell, yeah. That that's something I've I've overheard again. Right. You've got to you know you've got to dig at that and see whether there's anything there to corroborate. Yeah, yeah precisely. Um, I've cool. got lots of stories, but anyway. Yeah, 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 absolutely. But around this around this time of we're looking at eight eight hundred to eight fifty BC, um, we're seeing Etruscans and Sicanes together. Who, together who are so we've got this movement haven't we to the italian peninsula which hasn't been there before in our timeline hmm. um so that's interesting isn't it we've got latin there as well and latin yeah for the first time as well so what they mean by latin i don't know but we've got we're, we're in italy now yeah i think the latins were uh near rome south of rome yeah and um not the same as the Etruscans quite, but they're obviously oh. in proximity with each other and um, and grew alongside each other. And eventually, in that sense, the the Latins grew to supremacy and um, over overlapped and covered over Etrus the Etruscans. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Rome itself was. I've I've seen that um, Colburn like letters impressed into the cement. That the Etruscans put in the in the water system foundation of Rome, so we know the Etruscans laid the foundation. Yeah, absolutely. Their, their letters, not Latin letters, their letters are 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 um, pressed into the cement. Yeah, I don't know what Kilroy was here is in uh, Etruscan, but <laughs> it might well be an equivalent. But yeah, somebody, yeah, yeah. Somebody made their mark there in, in the foundation. The, yeah. Saw a shot of that. It was fantastic. That's amazing. Yeah, that's that's brilliant. Yeah, to see the um, echoes through time like that. Mm. Excellent. Um, but yeah, again, we've got Iron Age England in there too. At yeah. the same time, so yeah. Britain's there throughout. Yeah, there's well, a reach then, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, again, we've we've got Etruscans here. Illyrian, Illyrian popping up again, but we've got specifically Phoenician, um, a, a, a Phoenician link as well, Phoenician match. Yeah. Um, and we've got Tuscany in Italy. So yeah, this this Italian peninsula thing pops up again, early medieval Italy. Um, and then we get the Saka as well. Yeah. Indeed. So who, who are the Saka, Dad? Well, it's... Looking at that, you you might think they're they're from um, the vast you know sweep the steps in Russia. That might well be the case, but um, it's it. I remember watching a, a a video by an American professor years ago. I can't remember his name. I can see remember his face. He was an old boy. He was uh, well older than me anyway, and uh, yeah. he was uh, obviously. That generation who was looking at trying to fit the biblical narrative on on oh, and um, yeah. so he was talking about he spoke about the um, the ten, ten tribes he spoke about Beth Cymru he spoke about the uh, the Syrian civil war and the breakout of the ten tribes and they moved in several directions obviously uh, there's a sense of many of them um, tracked over to Anatolia. Right, yes, okay. and and tied up, uh, time wise. If we take the let, if we take the the um, the, the earlier date for Troy rather than the, the later one, so placing it somewhere in the um, 750s perhaps BC, um, yeah, that coincides with uh, this movement, um, of the uh, Camry, uh, into Anatolia, but there's also possible movements uh, earlier that tracked out of uh, Assyria, because I believe the, the Cymru were put on the east as a buffer between the kind of, uh, you know, the, this space between India and, um, let's say, the, uh, the Assyrian east. 
I think they wanted a protection zone there. And I think that's where uh, the, the Cymru were placed in his thinking. You've got from the, that position, instead of tracking westwards again across the, um, the Euphrates and the... Um, the other big river you you could track out you could go north and go between to head towards the Caucasus mm. and then swing round again west and that would place you into the uh that area of the uh the south you know this Eurasian steppes and the um uh what's the ocean what's the sea called there how does it come from me yeah the Black Sea thank you the Black Sea so you've yeah. got You've got that possibility that actually these people are still connected with the uh, with the Israelites. They're not separate. It's just that they've moved in a different area. And likewise, they themselves, although they, they're established there, I'm not sure how we, you know that date ties in with um, the kind of um, roughly with that period of the the escape from well it's a period of captivity yeah so you've got you you, you might have people traveling and, and moving earlier trying to get away right you've right. got this you've got this possible link there that they could well be israelites as well yeah and in that sense that they came from uh i think he mentioned issachar isaac as as the root uh, for them, and then they moved on, pressed themselves by peoples coming in, heavies coming in from um, the steppes. They, they they took movement and went into into Europe, and became this mm. uh, Saxon. So yeah, there's also that Scythian link, isn't there? Yeah, there's an overlap there too. Scythians, yeah, yeah. nice. I've had a look at Scythian writing, for example. So yeah, fantastic. Um, yeah, knobs. There's some. There's some Scythian writing. Like there's some writing, um, in Britain in Orkney, really. Um, okay. which looks identical to Scythian, mm. which I'll put up. I'll throw up a picture of it. Um, it's good to show the similarities to the uh, Colbra in in, in yeah. their, their forms. They're not far. They're not far apart. They're That's not... right. This, they look. Um, you've got to look. You've got to look twice, haven't you? I, to, yeah, I to, think they're not think quite the same. You can, no, they're not. But you can see actually, um, Luke, uh, ancient historian, um, sent me uh, a, a photo not long ago um, of some some writing. He said, "What do you think of this?" Um, and and I thought it looked Scythian to me, but it was right next to these pictograms, which look proto Sinaitic. Yeah. So I'll, I'll throw that up to see what you know. You can make what you make your mind up on that. But yeah, I'd like to see, like, yeah, because there could be some commonality there. Yeah, absolutely. They, they may have a yeah. root. They may have that root um, source. Yeah, absolutely. Developed. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Um. So moving on, um, we've got okay, Saka Scythian. There we go. Well, yo ho ho. There you go. Eurasian steppe, Saka, yeah. Scythian, um, Sakas again, yeah. uh, Etruscans again, um, early medieval Italy again, Tuscany. Yeah, we as we move closer to uh, point dot, uh, we, we're looking about three hundred and fifty BC now, and now those those that genetic timeline is now appearing in peoples who are said to be Celtic. Yeah, that's bang right. on. Yeah, so. I'm not going to send me that page yet. No, this is no. I, I went back and got some more. I'll send it to you. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. You see, there you go. So it this may is be, it. Yeah, this, yeah. This is it, and this is what I meant earlier about how this genetic data is found within graves, which are are given a specific label. Yeah. Um, and then all of us. This is why all of a sudden we get this Celtic thing emerge. Yeah, which is separating rather than than um, including. Yeah. Or. Yeah. Finding a through line of continuity and a cultural continuum, it's kind of like, well, we've got this the Celtic period now, and then you get Celtic graves and all the rest of it. When what they're really talking about, as I've said before, is the the thing that that reunites these people really is the, just yep. the material culture. Which, well, you know, it, I've got I've, a I've got the same mobile phone <laughs> as people in 
in yeah. Japan. And I'm not the yeah. same tribe as the Do you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm wearing a New York hat. I mean, I probably am related to quite a lot of people in New York, but, you know. Well, you'd be surprised, boy. No. Well, I, I've, I've been working on a, the Cadrod line recently, as you know. And, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Half of Hollywood's bloody Cadrod line. Yeah. Busy. Yeah, we should we should do a little bit of that if you want. Yeah, that'd be fun. I'm still building the list. I'm still gobsmacking what I'm finding, okay? Yes, yeah. And Cadrod being um, important because he could be the son of the grandson of Arthur. Is that right? That's right. And and essentially, he's the kind of I, he occurs at a cutoff point in that sense. If you look at the genealogies, uh, there's a point at which um, there's there's a disconnect between son and father at, at a place, and it looks as if there is a cut. Yeah, so it looks as if Cadrod's an insertion into a line. And this is the possible grafting onto the North Walian, into the North Walian line from... It became the North Walian, Walian line. line. Although yeah. I, I think his name, Cadron Cal, uh, Calthonith, I think it's pronounced, but yeah. that, I think that references the Chilton area. Right. The Chalky, that, that name references the Chalky Hills. And it yeah. may well be that east of uh, Ur, Singh, and then east of Moganig, okay, it's an area which um, the family might have had um, their their control or kingship. Yes. But, but that line eventually morphed into the Ross line in that sense. Yeah, yeah. North Wales, it kind of clarified. Well, I suppose then movements under pressure and time that um, there was a push-up. Yeah. And, and just to reiterate, the Ross line is an adjacent royal line to the Gwynedian line, which is uh, from Canada. Yeah. They're two different two different families by the looks of it, aren't they? That's right. But the they're two... they're they're very much like gate and post. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Alongside each other, and I think there are some kind of inter intermarriages, uh, effectively. But uh, yeah. it's interesting to see them as two different lines, and one of them we could say is Arthurian. That's the possibility. Yeah. One's coming from South Wales, and one's coming from. Uh, uh, uh with the the old men of the north. Yeah, yeah. So it's because it, 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 there's links there anyway between those two lines because we've got people like Yuri and Reged, who's got yeah. who's got um land in the north and also land in South Wales in the Gower. Yeah, apparently in Gower. Yeah, Rossilli. So you've got that Ross thing again in in South in um the Swansea Bay area. Mm. Anyway, that's it. That that lines. In in a sense, grew, grew and uh, had its own trajectory, and eventually became the Tudors. Yeah, so, yeah. Obviously, um, that's of interest, uh, you know, personally. But uh, I I'm just looking at it in that sense of how uh, that figure is so uh, is dismissed as myth in in that sense. Yeah, uh, and disconnected. Uh, but uh, so many. Uh, as I'll show, uh, it's 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 a very interesting situation whereby it's a very very memorable line when you look at the people that have come from it. So yeah, I'm producing a list anyway. Excellent. I'll share, I'll share that at some point. Brilliant, excellent stuff. Cool. Um, this is a, an interesting one because this is the first time that the name Britain emerges in the timeline. Two nine five. We've also got three ten. What's, what's the fi what's the figure there? At two nine five. Ad? I think that's um, Boudica. If we, I don't know if we can zoom in. Yeah, it's a bit early for Boudica, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it, it Obviously is. It's just a generic. Yeah, yeah. British kind of figure. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that they, they're sort yeah. of to, to, to they're saying. Well, from this point, we can start looking at these people from as. Um, Identify where Boudic came from, yeah. yeah. Okay. Eventually, so, but yeah, I think it's all yeah, as you say, generic. But yeah, I, I mean, we've got um, late Iron Age burials all the way through England, Britain. Yeah, uh, we've got as well. yeah, got one in got one in Kent. I've made a drawing from Kits Kitscoty. Oh, Kitscoty, that one. Yeah, yeah. I'll throw up a picture of Kitscoty as well. And that's late. That's it's, it's not Iron Age. <laughs> Well, that's that's fantastic that all of that information, yeah, 
percolating through it, you can see the old narratives. You see the old narratives poking their head through. Yeah, wonderful. And I think what might be worth doing at some point is having a talk about the... Again, well, I mean, it's not like we've avoided the topic of talking about the political reasons as to why these narratives have been have had the hard time in in certain periods well, of time. R- rid- but, ridicule comes to mind. Ridicule comes to mind, but but yeah. um, you know, one of the, the the later ones, you know, that, that I, I don't I haven't talked about much is the nineteenth century British Israelite movement. Yeah, um, which. By all means, was it was very problematic in the nineteenth century, um, and problematic now. I think even oh, when I've seen yeah. people uh, um, trying to open up this discussion, it's it's normally um, let's say it's soon uh, thrown into a hat as belonging to nineteenth century British, British Israelism. Yeah, but the, the the thing is, is that um, this isn't what this is because British Israelism is it's. It's its own entity. That's which right. Has, the which is confined to a period of time, which is the nineteenth century, and has got kind of it, it's basically a narrative of racial supremacy, and it's it's not. Um, so so it, it 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 reminds it it feels to me straight away that when you were talking about um, Henry the Seventh's consigning of right. British history to myth, uh, and and also then. Um, finding his own place for uh, rule, as it were, yeah. you know, practically um, in position. Um, so he he allowed himself the mythic source or resource for his own yeah. purposes, but discounted counted it discounted it as a history for his own practical needs in the present moment. Yes, that's it right. Seems to be like a move a movement looking for. Um, so if you're if you're saying the British Israelite movement wanted some kind of um, permission from the past to fuel its um, intent, yeah, some kind of operations going on. That's the same. It's a similar kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. For, it's thanks a similar for kind of thing where, yeah. but unlike when we're talking about Henry the Seventh, who is trying to make it exclusive. It's the other way around with the British Israelites in that they're trying to convince everybody that... They have a God-given it, right. It, a God, well, a God-given right to do things like dig up the Hill of Tara. Oh! You see what I mean? And, yeah. and, and they'll go around desecrating pagan sites and not treating yeah. them very respectfully because um, they're hoping to find the Ark of the Covenant in these places or they're hoping to find a, a relic in these places which... Anything which will back up their... Uh, narrative yeah yeah and mm. and that's where the, that's where people have the contentious contentious issue with the british israelites because it it's it's an it's a, it, 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 there's an aggressive element to it which is which isn't very nice basically right. okay um and i think that's why people have an issue with it as well as the the whole sort of white supremacy thing going on as well. Yeah, okay, I'll read that. Do you see what I mean? But um but it, it is an interesting doctrine to study because it I've I've it's something I've only dipped into it. I've I've only dipped into it. I'm aware of it because of the comments that people make as soon as you try to open up a discussion about um yeah the identity of, of the British. Yeah, the the yeah exactly, and that and that's I think what I'm, the reason I'm bringing it up is because it is a big hurdle in the way of making progress in this area. Yeah, because the British Israelite movement, in as it's seen in academia, is a thoroughly debunked theory. Even yeah. though I've never seen anyone debunk it, or can't find anybody doing it. By the way, um, there the the, the 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 kinds of people you see talking about it online. Um, Talk about it in a very um, cut and dry way, and not not to give it any kind of space to breathe, if, if you will, and just give give you sort of surface level representations of these silly British people thought they were Jews, basically. Yeah. Um, Instead of actually, um, in in whatever the matter yeah. was about what that movement meant, is to yeah. good open and honest look at it. Yeah. 
and to see what was being said, yes. how it was being said, and whether yes. or not there were any grains of truth in it. Yes, and yeah. where any uh, errors and mistakes um, were you know, were made. So um, you could, yeah. you could use anything positively. You shouldn't disclude anything from investigation just because somebody else has said you can't touch it. Which is the thing, and 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 I think actually ignoring the British Israelite thing, um, either trying to avoid it in conversations that we're having here, mm. or to um, deem them. On the other hand, deem, deem them as completely um, debunked. Mm. Um, all that does is serve to allow <laughs> very real elements of British Israelism in British culture and, and actually not just British culture, but in American culture too, to really um, step into their, step into their own without being challenged. Because the thing is, is that this uh, idea, it's a bit like, um, because you can't talk. <laughs> yeah. There is only yes and no. Yes. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> or agreement and disagreement. Yeah. There's no nuance of um, getting at the truth here. So, so yeah, you, you the, leave this, you leave situations open to misuse. You do, you do, because the thing is, is that you know, without wanting to get too political, um, there are people in America who believe that support for Israel and what they're doing mm. is justifiable because they're Israel, they're Israelites, yeah. and actually they want to have control in the middle east over that part of the levant which is that's now a israel. really that's a really pertinent issue isn't it so yeah the um the 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 trump administration i believe were involved were were believers of this ideology mm. Mm. um in that support for israel is a biblical it's a biblically driven I think, I believe, uh, imperative. I believe, yeah, I believe the same as the Bush administration. And Bush administration, Bush. exactly. So, and and when you look at the history of foreign policy in America, it's it's at the root of it. Um, it's called the Monroe Doctrine. So that was set up in the eighteen hundreds, um, and that was essentially their manifesto. They called it the manifest manifest destiny, which gave them permission to essentially assert rule in South America. And trying to enforce democracy yeah. and capitalism, um, in order to essentially will power in 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 the in the in the in that area, which caused all of the revolutions in the yeah. in the twentieth century with no, you know, Che Guevara, everyone like that. Yeah, this is so, really loaded, isn't it? This is like a really important conversation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> isn't it? Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um. And though I was listening to a, a Catholic bishop in America talking, um, mm -hmm. and he said that the Confederates, um, they were speaking to a, a guy who, a, a shopkeeper who was a uh, it was a um, Confederate guy, a Confederate flag up, and um, the the priest asked him, um, "Well, what do you think about the the American Civil War?" Mm -hmm. You know. What would you have liked things to have been different? Different, and, and the guy said, "No, I think there, sh there needs to be a United States of America because our job is to look after Israel." And yeah. you, you, so you see, in America, this this idea is very strong, yeah. um, and it it comes from the um, it comes from Britain. This idea, so we need to speak about it. We need yeah. to have these have these conversations about it in a in a open dialect. Dialectical way, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Aye, aye, aye. Okay, so well, yeah. I think we need to uh, wish ourselves good luck on that one. Absolutely. Nice one, Dad. Okay. Yeah. All right. There we All go. Right. <laughs> Sorry? I think I need another cup of tea to get the old... Um... Right, okay. So that was our chat for um, discussing the, the new genetic data available. And I hope you enjoyed that and found that informative. Um, 
uh, please, as always, if you've got any ideas or anything you want to share, don't don't hesitate to uh, leave in the in the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well. And um, yeah, keep keep the conversation flying. I can't wait to see what um, you guys make of this. Okay, thanks very much. Well, take care. Cheers. <laughs>